This is one of those pieces that from a distance doesn't look too bad until you get up close. There are a ton of areas where the veneer is peeled off or missing. There were a few unsuccessful previous repairs and the finish is just shot on this piece. I really want to thank Best Bins Valley Disposal for seeing that this piece didn't need to be doomed. This literally was in the trash and I'm going to see what I can do to make sure that it stays out of the trash. This little mid-century dresser came to me by itself, but when I was putting it in the garage, I kept having things falling out of it, and these are knobs to what I'm assuming would have been a matching long dresser. I don't know what the fate is of that dresser, but I'm going to do what I can to save this one. Stay tuned. My name is Angie, and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint, and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, so diving right in, this is a walnut veneer and the finish on this is just, it's gone. It needs to be completely done. We've got areas where there are stains and you can see here this weird pattern. This sometimes happens when you put certain plastics on top of these older pieces. It will actually melt the finish underneath. You see that a lot with those plastic doilies, if you remember those, or if you set like a plastic tray on it. This is one of those situations where a coat of beeswax is just not going to cut it. This finish absolutely has to be removed. There were a few of the knobs that were sitting a little weird and when I pulled the screws out I realized that it was because the screws themselves are bent so those will have to be replaced. As I'm running my hand along here I can actually feel ridges and ripples in the finish so it's quite dried out and brittle and you can see the color is not consistent and it looks like someone has tried to glue in some of these patches before and then cover it up with this stain and it just didn't work out very well. So as I'm taking this apart, I'm having a good look at how this is all made. The construction of this piece is a little different than what I'm normally used to seeing with mid-century furniture around here. A lot of this is made of plywood with veneer over top, which you can see here on the underside of the drawer. There's no pressed wood on this piece, which is actually fairly abnormal for mid-century furniture. And even looking at the inside, my first thought was that maybe this was a handmade piece, like a one of a kind, but this hardware I've seen multiple times before. So this is definitely a manufactured piece. It's just a bit of an interesting one. There's no maker's mark. Now from the outside, this drawer looks like it's fairly deep. You've got this pattern etched into the wood and you can see where this hardware sits. You would think that this would be about a third of the way up, but if I turn this around, you can see that the hardware is right at the base of the drawer. And that is because they have this lip here on the bottom. So what you're seeing from the front is not actually the depth of the drawer, which can be a little misleading sometimes, but that's just a design choice that was made here to accommodate this sort of pattern that they have on the drawer faces. Interesting. And as I'm pulling this bottom drawer out, I found a bunch more of these knobs. So there was definitely something that came with this piece that matched. Apparently there were also mirrors. The mirror didn't come with this, which is fine because 99% of the time people don't want the mirrors anymore. I have a ton of mirrors in my storage room that I do have a sale on about once a year. Try to get rid of them. And yeah, just having another quick peek inside, I have no idea what those round holes were for. They are found on both sides at the top, so interesting. This is a very strange piece. Because this finish is so dry and brittle, scraping is probably going to be the fastest and most effective way to do it. I'm not afraid of chemicals. You guys see me use lacquer and stuff all the time. You have to be safe with it, of course, but obviously when I'm able to, I'd like to use as few of those chemicals as possible. I could certainly use a stripper on this, but scraping should go pretty quickly with this old finish. I'm just using a file here to quickly sharpen up these blades. Every few uses, I'll do a very good sharpening. This is kind of my in-between. And if you want to see more about how I do it, I actually do have a video where I go into more detail and I will link to that down below along with the timestamp if you want to see how to do it. I do have people every so often that ask me how often I change my blades. This is the original blade that came with this and I've been using it, I think for around a year and there's still plenty of life left in it. So you don't need to go get a new blade every time it gets dull. You just need to learn how to sharpen it. 
So as is often the case with these mid-century pieces, they're not stained. So this is a good shot here. You can actually see the bare walnut veneer. And then you see this other layer, which you can see doesn't have a sheen. That's the color layer. So that's where they put their tinted lacquer, which gives it the color. And this last little bit, I'm just pulling very lightly here and I'm scraping off just the top coat. It takes a little bit more elbow grease to get down through that color layer because it's usually the thickest layer. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you that the original finishes on these are often multiple layers of things and they very seldom used stain and that sometimes it is possible to remove just the top coat. It's not easy, but you can do it with a scraper. With a stripper, that stripper is just gonna go through all the layers at once, so you don't really have that option. Okay, so when you're scraping the edges, you need to figure out which layer is on top. Is the top layer of veneer over top of the edge banding, or does the edge banding overlay the top? This matters because if you pull off on the edge here and the edge banding was the last thing to go on, when you pull, you're going to tear it and it happens <laughs> quite often. So you have to be careful and pay attention to those things. You can also go on a little bit of an angle. Usually what I like to do is try to scrape right down to the very end and then I will just take off this little bit just on the slightest angle. You don't want to go, you know, 90 degrees because then you'll be pulling cross graining. You don't want to do that, but doing it on a slight angle really does help. Once the old finishes off, you can start to see problems with the veneer itself, like this stain here. And as I'm continuing on, I'm finding more things. So there's another stain there. And under this section, there was a black ring. So these are all things that are gonna have to be addressed before I do any sealing of this piece. So I have everything stripped off the top here and I can see, like I said, all of the stains, the rings, but there's also this area where there's some discoloration. Now sometimes this is natural part of the wood grain, but in this case, I don't think all of this is natural. So what I'm gonna do is hit the top here with some oxalic acid once I do a first light sanding and hopefully that will help pull out any of the dark marks that are not natural. Now on mid-century pieces that have side panels made of pressed wood, there's usually a veneer strip of edge banding on the front. These side panels are made of plywood, so all they did was they used a thick stain or paint to basically just cover up that. So I'm going to have to repaint those when it comes time. But this rail on the front here is walnut veneer, so I need to scrape that as well. I often have people ask why I wear these earmuffs while I'm scraping. I am a weirdo with certain noises and I cannot stand the sound of scraping. It's one of the reasons that I sometimes have a hard time watching videos where it's just tool sounds, particularly scraping and hand sanding. It, there's just something about the tone and pitch of it that I just can't handle. So that is why I'm wearing earmuffs, if you must know. <laughs> This is a card scraper, and if you've been on my channel for a while, you've seen me use this before. I normally like to scrape away from myself. And it's just an alternative to one of those handheld scrapers, which can be a little intimidating sometimes. You guys know me, I love to save pieces, especially from the trash. But there are risks with pulling something out of a dumpster or off the side of the road. Sometimes there is a legitimate reason why they're there. So when you're taking these pieces apart and cleaning them, make sure you're checking all of the cracks. You don't want any little insect surprises, mold or woodworms. Sometimes they're put outside because of certain odors. I don't have a problem with difficult cases, but there are some things I won't touch. I won't touch something if I know that it has had bed bugs, even though you can treat it. It's just, it, I don't want it anywhere near my shop. 
So as exciting as it can be to pull something off the side of the road, make sure that before you even put it in your car, that you pull out all of the drawers, inspect underneath them, look at the inside, look at the back, just be safe. I have to be really careful as well scraping around this previous repair and what looks like happened here is that a piece got torn off and someone tried to glue it back. It didn't get glued back in the right spot so I'm going to see if I'm able to move it over and if not I'm going to have to put completely different pieces of veneer in here. This neat little round sanding block I picked up the other day at Lee Valley. It makes things so much easier when you're hand sanding. I'm sanding here with 150 grit and I need to sand before applying the oxalic acid. And to help me get a good look, I'm adding some OD Safer solvent to just sort of clean up the residual dust and any dirt that happens to remain on the surface and then I can really see the issues. So the dark areas you see here were caused by the finish failing in these areas and you can actually see them right there. In addition to those, we've got that dark water ring that I showed you at the back and there's just some weird dark marks here and there. I'm not really sure what caused most of these, but we'll see what comes off with the oxalic acid. Now this will not get rid of every single type of stain. It's really, really good for removing dark water stains. It's really easy to use, you basically just dissolve it in some hot water, but you want to make sure that you're wearing gloves and breathing apparatus and that you're working in a well-ventilated area. So try to remember where these problem areas were so that we can compare once the oxalic acid is done and see what it helped with and what it didn't help with. I'm applying oxalic acid to the entire top. And this is just a close-up here to kind of show you that the reason I go back and forth with my brush so many times is that it will continue to absorb. So each time I go back and forth with the brush, it takes in a little bit more of that oxalic acid. It almost looks like it's bubbling, but it's really just absorbing. And this is also why you want to rinse oxalic acid so thoroughly after the fact. While that first layer of oxalic acid is drying, I'm going to get to work on these two drawers specifically. These are the ones that had the veneer tear out. And again, you can see where someone had glued this in place, but they didn't glue it all the way over <laughs> for some reason. And once I popped that off and tried to put it in the correct spot, there were gaps. So what that tells me is that there was another sliver here initially that got lost or torn out. So basically what I'm going to do is kind of straighten this up a bit and I'm going to put a whole new piece of veneer in there. It's not difficult to splice a new veneer like this, but where it gets tricky, especially for me here where I'm not going to be staining this, is getting the colors to match and not have them stand out. So you'll see how I deal with that a little bit later on. So I've got some walnut veneer here and what I need to do is try to match the green as closely as possible, making sure that firstly that it's running in the same direction. <laughs> and I know that sounds obvious but I have seen repairs where they have put veneer in running in a different direction and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Because the veneer on the drawer face and the new veneer are different ages, possibly even different species of walnut, like I said there is going to be a difference in color. And there's a couple of different ways that you can deal with that. 
You can stain the new piece to blend in. You can use things like uh, pigments to kind of paint over it and help it blend in. Sometimes you can use toners if they're larger pieces or a combination of any of these things. All of the patched areas I'm doing are fairly small, so I should be able to get a fairly close match with just some uh, graining markers. And then there'll be a clear coat over top of that. So I have to let that completely dry and in the meantime I'm going to do a couple more repairs to the drawers. Here you can see where the veneer has pulled away from the drawer face. It doesn't go down very far so loading up my glue syringe is probably a waste of time. <laughs> I'm just going to sort of push that in with my finger. People often ask me how long it takes to do certain projects and it really just depends on the amount of small repairs. This particular section here maybe took me, I don't know, five minutes to glue and clamp up, but when you multiply that by multiple drawers and little pieces of chipped veneer here and adding wood filler there, it really does add to the time of the project. And it always seems to be the ones that I think are going to be fast that end up taking the longest. Especially when you're dealing with things like oxalic acid where you have to wait for it to completely dry out initially after you put it on and then also again once you rinse it with water you have to let that completely dry before you can do anything else. So this project did take me a couple days in total. Just before I paint these little edge sections, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for your well wishes regarding the wildfires here. This photo was taken from up the street from my house the day that the Tantalum fire started, which was the one closest to us. And it got a lot worse from there, really quickly. We've been very lucky that we've had several days of rain now, so things have started to turn. We're not quite out of the woods yet, but I wanted to share with you some footage I took from our bedroom the night that the rain started. And just a warning here, if you have sensitivity to flashing light or you have animals that are afraid of thunder, you might want to skip this part. I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Chocolate to do these edges. And it's mostly just to give me a base for the next step, which will be using a water-based stain over top 
in a slightly different color and the two combined are going to give me the look that I want. And again, this is only on those areas of exposed plywood. Anywhere that there's actual walnut veneer, that will just be getting Odie's oil. These legs are clearly not walnut. They are a different type of wood. And sometimes I like to leave contrast between two different types of wood on a piece. But because there's no other light wood anywhere on this, like there's no light handles or anything, it doesn't really make sense to leave just the legs light. So I am going to be using this water-based stain to darken them up and help them blend in a bit more. Water-based stain looks very chalky when it's dry and it can kind of throw you if you're not used to using it. But once you put your clear coat on, you'll see quite a difference. All right, the top is finally dry and I'm able to really have a look here. As expected, these light areas did not change, but a lot of the dark areas did. So that's good news. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put my Odie's oil on the top. Odie's oil is a tongue oil based hard wax oil finish and you've seen me use it dozens of times by now. I like to apply it with a Merkham Merlon pad. This is a 1500 grit and you can use a white pad as well. You just want to make sure that you're not using anything that will absorb the oil and I wouldn't recommend putting it on with something like steel wool either. This non-woven pad just pushes it around and works it into the wood grain itself and just gives it an absolutely beautiful finish. This piece was crying out for moisture and if you've ever tried to apply Odie's oil and had it absorb unevenly or absorb very quickly, before you go and you buff off that layer, you want to go in and add some more. You want to make sure that you have a nice consistent layer on top and that it's not absorbed into some areas and not in others. So all I did there was just add a little extra to the top. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I said that it's quite chalky until you put a top coat on it, the water-based stain. As soon as the Odie's goes on, it looks completely different. And if you're wondering why I opted for a water-based stain versus an oil-based stain, it's just a little bit more opaque. And you can really see the difference there between with and without the top coat. If you enjoy this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share it if you want to, and don't forget to subscribe if you do like this sort of content. I try to put out at least three videos a month. When you're applying Odie's oil over situations like this where you've got edges of veneer, you want to be super careful that the pad that you're using to apply it doesn't catch those little pieces and tear them. So you can see what I'm doing here. Basically, I'm just sort of dabbing over those seams and then using my normal motion to rub the oil in. So as far as the original hardware goes, these are not solid brass. They're brass plated and they've lost a lot of their plating over the years. Sometimes you can apply something like Brasso or Barkeeper's Friend and sort of buff that back. I'm not very hopeful here. I'm gonna try to clean it up just to see what it looks like, but I can already tell that most of the color is gone and there's a bit of tarnish. So at this point, I was at a bit of a crossroads. I'm like, okay, do I just leave them the way they are, clean them up and put them on? But I didn't like the amount of tarnish. It's, they didn't necessarily have to look brand new, but it just, it wasn't sitting well with me. I could have replaced them, but they're kind of funky and they go with the piece. So I will be giving these some spray paint.
I went ahead and sanded the inside and outsides of the drawers and I'm adding some powered feed and wax which will help nourish the wood and make it look new or at least newer. Okay, so these light spots, like I mentioned, I knew would not come up with the oxalic acid because they're already bleached out for some reason. Like I said before, also, there are multiple ways that you can do this. The quickest way for me is just going to be to use some of these graining markers to help camouflage it. And what's nice about these is that there are different colors and having a range of colors really helps in a situation like this because, as you can see, there are multiple tones here. If I were to use one marker to try to blend in this whole area, it would be painfully obvious that it was a touch up. So by using different colors and values, you end up with a much more successful look. And you can see this particular marker doesn't really look good there, but it blends in perfectly here. So once I am certain that this has completely dried, I'm going to go in with some Odie's wood butter and seal that color work up. And let's not forget the patch here on the drawers. There is one that was a bit lighter than the rest. And looking back now, I kind of wish I had stained that piece, but I did go in with the same markers and it turned out okay, but I might have got a slightly better result if I had used some pigments there instead of the markers, just where it was a slightly larger area. And the great hardware debate. I had made a post on my community page where I was trying to decide between painting these black or painting them gold. Gold would give them more of a classic look closer to the original, but I just, I don't know, I had a feeling about black and you guys did too. The majority was voting for black. But what happened was I applied it like I normally do and it was scraping off really easily. So I had to remove it all and start again. <laughs> I decided to use a primer. Normally I don't have issues with adhesion. I, it must just be these particular pieces or the fact that I had used some Brasso earlier, possibly. So I decided to try the primer and once again, it was just scraping off super easily. So I decided to double check the directions and you're supposed to put several coats on within a couple of minutes of each other. But I think what's happening here is that I just need to scuff sand this a bit more than I initially did. It's just going to give something for that primer to grip. And once I did that, I had no problems. So I was able to go in. I did, I think, two or three coats of primer and then two coats of the paint itself. And I left one drawer completely untouched until the very end, just so I could take this shot where it shows what the drawer and hardware looked like before and what it looks like after the Odie's oil and painting the hardware black. So you let me know which drawer you like better. I won't hold it against you <laughs> if you prefer the original. I think the black looks super sharp and hopefully the new owners like it as well. In this flip, I used Odie's Safer Solvent to clean Gorilla Wood Glue to do some of my repairs, Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Chocolate and Cement Water Base Stain in the color American Walnut. The wood filler I used is Timbermate in the color Cherry. Normally I would use Walnut, but I felt it was a little bit dark. Sealed with Odie's oil and Odie's wood butter. For those areas where I had to sort of match the color to the rest of the piece, I used these Mohawk brush tip graining markers. I did use Brasso, but I ended up, it was kind of a waste of time, <laughs> but I did use it. I primed the hardware in this Rust-Oleum Painters Touch Flat Black Primer, and then used this Design Master Color Tool Spray in Flat Black. Powered feed and wax inside the drawers, apply with this wax brush. One man's trash is another man's treasure, they always say, and this definitely fits that. 
while I may be thinking in my head, why would someone throw this out? It's still perfectly usable. I don't know why. We don't know the circumstances. But one thing I do know is that over 10 million tons of furniture ends up in the trash every year in Canada and the US alone. For me, that's not acceptable. So every piece I can pull out is one more piece that stays in circulation. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you next time. Thank you.